a reference to his gospel, the sayings of Jesus in the Hebrew language. Summary of the attestation of authorship. The attestation of authorship is not only significant and early, it is also ge geographically diverse, coming from every quarter of the Roman Empire. Tertullian in Carthage, Clement in Alexandria, Irenaeus in France, and Papias in Asia Minor. There is no rival tradition of authorship for any of the four Gospels. Many early writers make use of the Gospels without naming or describing their authors. This evidence takes us back even earlier than the evidence of attribution. For these authors to, to make use of the Gospels as authoritative sources means that they expect their audience to recognize their quotations and illusions and to accept them as authentic. A few examples of early use of the Gospels. Ignatius' letter to Polycarp 107, in all circumstances be wise as serpent and personally harmless as a dove, Matthew 10, 16. Polycarp letter to Philippians 108, blessed are the poor and those persecuted for, for, for righteous necks, for righteousness sakes, for those is the kingdom of God, Luke 6, 20. Basilid's Gnostic Heretic 125, that each man has his own appointed time, he says the Saviour sufficiently indicates that he says my hour is not yet come, John 2, 4. Bas uh, Balicides, this he says is what is mentioned in the Gospels, he was the true light which lights every man coming into the world, John 1, 9. Clement of Rome, first epistle to Corinthians 95, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, which he spoke as he gave, so it shall give you, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. Woe to that man, it were better than he were not born, than he should offend one of my elect, if it were better than a milestone were hanged about him, and he were drowned in the sea, and that he would offend one of my little ones, Matthew 7, 2, Mark 4:24. Luke 6, 38, uh, Matthew 8, 6, Mark 9, 4, 2, Luke 17, 2. Note in particular the extensive use of the New Testament in Polycarp, who writes within a decade or so of the death of the Apostle John and was one of John's disciples. He quotes Matthew, Mark, Luke, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Hebrews and 1 Peter. Summary of the early use of the Gospels, the four Gospels and Acts are used copiously by the early church fathers, taking us back to within the lifetime of the Apostle John himself. Note this about what uh, Justin Martyr says about the early church and the reading of scripture. And on the day called Sunday, all who live in cities in the country gather together to one place and the memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are read as long as time permits. First Apology 6-7. Now this uh, piece of paper, uh, I wanted to talk about the Gospels. One of the things I wanted to talk about the Gospels is the authorship. And this was a piece of paper that I find very helpful. Who wrote the Gospels by Dr. Timothy McGrew? So I'll just get some water. I'll just be one second. So another area is uh, I have specific Quranic verses written down for you Hamza for you to deal with. I wanted you to deal with Surah 5116 concerning the Quran statement on the Trinity. Is the Quran correct in its statement about 
the Trinity there because it seems to be that the Quran um, doesn't really quote the Trinity of what the Christians believe but also I wanted to ask a specific question concerning concerning this it's called radical truth it says Muslims claim that because Muhammad was illiterate he could not have written the Quran and thus the Quran is a miracle Muhammad primary miracle this idea of illiteracy is supported in the Quran in Surah 7 1 Five, seven, those who follow the apostle, the unlettered prophet, whom they find mentioned in their own scripture, in the law and the gospel. And you can find Surah 7, 158. So, what we read in, uh, you can read in Sarah al Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 3, Number 6, 5. Uh, Sayyid Bukhari volume 1, 3, number 1114. Sayyid uh, Bukhari volume 7, 6, 2, number 88. But he says the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was 6 years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was 9 years old and she remained with him for 9 years till his death. So that says he wrote something down which uh, contradicts what the Quran is saying. I know you're going to say, well, uh, Hadiths are not the Quran, but it seems to me that um, it just seems to me that you do have tradition there uh, that that contradicts the Quran anyway. So I had a, a, a number. I think I had one here. I had a number of Quranic verses and Hadiths for you to answer questions about. Yeah, in Surah 1094, Muhammad doubted. Muhammad is to be, a, a, if you're to follow Muhammad and he doubted, then that would mean that a Muslim should doubt. So how can Muhammad be the best person to follow if he doubted? Before we go on uh, to give Hamza some more information for him to think about, I'd like to encourage people, this book is called Facing the Muslim Challenge, John Gilchrist, a handbook for Christian Muslim, Christian and Muslim apologetics. It's a really, really good book. I would encourage Christians to get hold of this book. Facing the Muslim Challenge, John Gilchrist. It's a really, really good book. And I would encourage everybody to uh, get involved with that. It's a really excellent book. Uh, so I'd encourage you to all to, to really to study that. Uh, before we go on with Hamza, we'll just have a, a side issue. Um, so I'm going to give you some more information to think about in a second, Hamza. But I, I want to just go to, is, does the Bible teach the, the Trinity? I want people to have a look at John 17, 3. John 17, 5. Let's go to John 17, 3. It says in John 17.3 John 17.3 it says And this is eternal life that they might know thee The only true God And Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent and this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. But notice there in John 17, 3, there's a differentiation between God and Jesus Christ. But then he says, and this is eternal life, that, you, that they might know thee, 
the only true God putting God and Jesus on the same level. Jesus is putting himself and God on the same level. Now verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So Jesus existed before the world was and had the glory. Now we know that the glory, the glory of God was seen. What came down uh, at the transfiguration, the glory came down uh, on Mount Sinai, the glory. So he says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So those who want to look about the Trinity, please look at Titus chapter 2, verse 17, Romans 9, verse 5, John 20, 28, the I am sayings in 8, 24, 8, 58, John 13, 19, and Rome, uh, John 18, 5 and 6. Jesus was worshipped in John chapter 1, verse 3, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, Hebrews chapter 1, to verse 2 and 3. Please read Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 11, and 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 which is a quote of Isaiah chapter 8, verse 12 and 13. And Ignatius, an early church father, calls Jesus God early on. So that's just a digression about the Trinity and uh, that Christ is divine. That's a digression. So the next thing I wanted to bring up with Hamza, which if I'd have debated him on is the Bible or Quran word of God, I was going to hit him with this. I was going to hit him with a list of some of the material in the Quran that Muhammad copied and adopted from Christians, the Jews, the Armenians, the Hindus, uh, the Magi, Magi the Zor Zoroastrians, okay? In the Teya Mum, chapter 4, verse 43, copied from the Jewish scripture, the Talmud. Breathing life into birds, in chapter 2, verse 260, chapter 3, verse 49, chapter 5, verse 110, copied from the Coptic books. Oris Azaz uh, Azazil, uh, chapter 44, verse 54, learned from the foreigners in Mecca. Harut and Marut, chapter 2, 102, from the Armenian books, Harut, Marut, are in control of wind and rain. Allah's throne above the water, in 11, chapter 11, verse 7, this is of the Quran, from the Jewish tradition. Malik, the ruler of hell, chapter 43, verse 77, from the Jews, Malik and Leviticus, in chapter 18, verse 21, etc. Seven heavens, chapter 2, verse 29, chapter 41, 12, adopted from the Sanskrit scriptures of the Hindus. Mary giving birth under the trunk of a tree, chapter 19, 23, copied from the Gospel Infancy, and the apocryphal Christian gospel. Infant Jesus talking, chapter 3, verse 46, chapter 19, verse 30 to 31, chapter 19, verse 33, copied from the gospel infancy. The description of paradise and hell, there are many verses. This sees the section of Solomon, the Persian, copied from the Zoroastrians and Hindus. Jesus not killed, Allah lifted up, Jesus... Uh, Chapter 3, verse 55, chapter 4, verse 157, and 158, copied from the Gospel of Barnabas. And I'm not even gone through a quarter of the verse of the Quranic verses that are used in other religious literature. So it, the Quran is plagiarized. Now, if you say, well, these books were after Jesus, 
Uh, well, there's so many different books quoted here that that is very difficult, difficult to substantiate. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the Book of Acts. I did a lot of work on the Book of Acts. I did a heck of a lot of work on the Book of Acts. I spent many, many hours, Hamza, many, many hours, uh, researching the Book of Acts. So one of the things that Uh, I listened to a lecture which people can go and listen to. It's called uh, The Theology of Luke, Luke Acts. And uh, Dr. Craig Keener uh, did a lecture on the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. And it was a really good lecture. I would encourage your Hamza to go and listen to that lecture. And in the lecture, he talked a lot about Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. And uh, I'll just look at verse 8. And uh, Acts... So this was a lecture by Craig Keener. So m my strategy, Hamza, if we were talking... I know you like to talk about the Gospel of Matthew. But I, I had quite a lot of research on the book of Acts, so... That was my ace card to fall back on, but I never got to debate you, so I'm just going to give you a few thoughts on the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and shall witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And what that proves is the gospel was meant for the whole world. And uh, you can go and listen to a wonderful lecture by Craig Keener on YouTube, top scholar, one of the world authorities on the book of Acts. And you can go and listen to his lecture, Acts Luke's Theology. And that is something that I prepared for you, Hamza. But um, you never gave me the opportunity to, to engage with you. The other thing I, I studied, listened to Hamza, was another talk, a talk by um, Craig Keener on the reliability of Acts. Now, Craig Keener has written four massive volumes on the Book of Acts. He's a world authority on the Book of Acts. And he talks about the Book of Acts uh, couldn't have been a novel because novels didn't deal with the factual information um, but but the historiography was dealing uh, drawing on uh, biography you can get this on the YouTube channel Apologetics Academy um, Craig Keener deals with postmodernism and its lack of historical uh, rigorous historical analysis of history and um, he talks about Pliny and Aristotle and how history was viewed in the ancient world he says that good writing, historical writing was seen as writing in living memory uh, that, it had, that it was generally pretty accurate He was saying that one of the reasons why the Book of Acts was written as a polemic against the accusation uh, that Paul was causing unrest in, I think, Acts chapter 19, 21, 16. So, The Reliability of Acts by Craig Keener is a lecture that I listened to, made notes on, and had ready for you, bro. I also read this article uh, for you, Hamza. The speeches in Acts by Marley Bland Dudley. And uh, it looks at how ancient history saw, saw speeches. And the thesis of ancient history was that speeches 
you can make them up. So the argument is, well, if you can make speeches up when you're writing history, Luke could have made it up. But I go into why this is, even though ancient history sometimes saw this, and even though, um, even though, um, what can I say? Even though many scholars believe this, I give some cogent arguments uh, that this isn't the case. For example, in th uh, the the uh, in Thucydides, uh, the chronicle of the Polynesian War, commented on his own methodology. He says, "I think my views sounded them than one based simply on the untested statements and romantic tales of early writers, whether in verse or prose." I know that we are all inclined to think a war in which we're engaged must be the greatest, but I am convinced that the history of the events of this one will show I am right about its magnitude. I have tried to relate these events as accurately as possible, both the speeches and the deeds done. Difficult as this was, my work is intended for posterity, not to be a bestseller for the moment. So there are some scholars that see that, for example, Thucydides did try to be accurate, generally speaking, about the speeches. So, in other words, the complexity of uh, ancient history and, and the way they viewed speeches was much more complex than historians give credit. And also, when we're looking at Luke and... Uh, the reason why Luke wrote his, his book of Acts, how he wrote his book of Acts, I think scholars have failed to realise his, his connection with the book of Luke. And, and scholars recognise that the book of Luke is based on eyewitnesses it's based on good oral tradition and i think that scholars fail to see that in the book of acts so i give a so i had some cogent arguments to show that the book of acts in its speeches was accurate i had information uh, by sam simon on additional evidence of the deity of christ in the christology of luke and acts so i had that for you hamza i also had information concerning um, the historical reliability of the book of Acts. But what I wanted to do is to corner you on the Quran and its lack of historical veracity. So this article, Timothy McGrew says, here are some of the details that L Luke gets right in the Acts and cannot be derived from Josephus. Most of these can be found in Colin Herman's magisterial work the Book of Acts and the setting of Hellenistic history. Now, uh, Colin Hermer is a secular writer. A natural crossing. Uh, number one, a natural so historical veracity of the Book of Acts. Acts, ch Acts chapter thirteen, verse four and five. A natural crossing between correctly named ports, Mount Cassius, which is south of Seleucia, is within sight. Of Cyprus. Number two, the proper port of Perga along the direct destination of a ship crossing from Cyprus, 13, chapter 13, verse 13. And there are 60 odd of these historical facts in the book of Acts. And I wanted to compare that with the Quran. What historical data do we have that shows the book of the Quran can be historically verified as a historical book? Which I don't think it can be. I think it's a very weak book on history then in my bible i had lots of notes and uh, lots of information excuse me lots of notes but one of my favorite questions Hamza, is uh, that I would have loved to have got you one is about the death and resurrection of Jesus. And um, the Quran says he, he did not die. And I would have loved you to answer these questions. Uh, in Matthew 27, 35, it says they crucified him. In Mark 15, 24, and when they crucified him. In Luke 23, 33, and when they had come a place called Calvary, there they crucified him. In John 19, 23, 
Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments. There are eyewitnesses. A centurion, an officer, over 100 men, guarded Jesus as he died on the cross. Matthew 27, 54. The Roman soldiers who beat Jesus sat and watched him die. Matthew 27, 27, 36. Chief priests, scribes and elders all watched Jesus die. Matthew 27, 41. Many unnamed women whom Jesus had known watched him die. Matthew uh, 27, 55. In John 19, 25, 27, we have his family. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Madeleine. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciples took, the, took her to his own home. We have historical data to verify that Jesus died. We have Thalos in 55, an ancient historian who wrote a three volume history. Thalos mentions the darkness that occurred at the death of Jesus, just as recorded in Matthew 27 45, Mark 15 33, Luke 23 44. Cornelius Tatatus in 55 120 AD, this respected Roman historian had a disdain for Christians, calling them believers in a most mischievous superstition. Nevertheless, Tatatus confirmed that the sect was formed from the followers of Christus who suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilate. Lucid of Samosua, 115-200, a well-known satirist and lecturer, Lucian refers to the Christians as poor wretches and foolish people who accept such things on the faith alone without any evidence. He also calls them the one who worshipped the man in Palestine who was crucified because he brought this new form of initiation into the world. So, in Matthew 16, 21, it says, From that time on, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and be killed and be raised on the third day. Matthew 17, 22, 27, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed in the hands of men, and they will kill him, and the third day he will be raised up. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, From even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom of many. And Luke 18, 31, 33. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going to up to Jerusalem and all things that are written by the prophets, prophecy concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished, for he will be delivered to the Gentiles. They will scourge him and kill him. The third day he will raise him again. Clearly, Jesus prophesied his crucifixion, yet the Quran denies this. So, I would have loved for you to have engaged on the question of did Jesus die and rise again? But we didn't get onto that opportunity. And uh, I would have loved for you to engage in the questions of the historical information outside the Bible uh, concerning Thallus, Pliny the Younger, Suetonius, Tacitus, Bar Sapien, Pelagon, Lucian of Samosa, Celsus. Josephus, Jewish Talmud, etc. I would have loved for you to engage with the information outside the Bible that confirms of Jesus' death, etc. So, I'm going to read this and then we're finished. The other thing as well, you get people like uh, Hashim. I just get uh, this this book. Uh, you get people like Hashim going around saying things. I just want to. Just share about this a while and then I'll finish. Right, I don't I don't need this, so. but check out that book. 
Facing the Muslim Challenge, John Gilchrist. Okay. So I just want to deal with um, Hashim. And Little Hamza. Little Hamza goes around uh, saying that he's been on record uh, saying that um, in the past the Gospels couldn't have been written by the fishermen uh, because they weren't educated. And actually, being a fisherman was uh, quite a well paid work. It was a, it was kind of middle class work. It wasn't as lowly as Ham Little Hamza states. Um, so they could have easily have developed a writing ability. Secondly, um, as this book shows, there were study groups all over Judea. 